So that's how I would play Roscoe up to speed with all kinds of bells and whistles and variations. Each one of those times through the tune, a unique version. I never really played it exactly like that before. And that's really the joy of finding all these variations and being able to layer them on top of each other. And that's certainly the long-term goal here. Um, it keeps these tunes fresh and it helps you develop your own unique style. But with that said, let's go to the breakdown of the first time through the tune, just to give you some more variation ideas, because ultimately, these ideas don't just fall out of the sky. Each one of those little variation concepts, I've learned from other players and listening to other folks. Some of them might be unique. The way I piece them together could be unique. Uh, but they're all just basically layered variations and each variation I've learned and spent time independently working on. So let's go through this tune, Roscoe, with some of the basic variations I threw in at the beginning. So I started with a little slide. We talked about slides earlier and how you can use them all over the place. I like to use maybe a little slide here, four to five. You can slide two to five. You can also do little slides. And then to open first string, followed by that pull off to the second string. So drop thumb. And then that backward slide. That's a cool variation, right? It's different than the four to two backward slide. A different kind of sound. It's almost a bluesier kind of feel. So. Now, here's a new concept for us, and that's called the ghost strum. Some of you might be familiar with this already as a skip stroke. Uh, I call it a ghost strum, and it's basically when you play a bum ditty and you hit the head of the banjo instead of doing the ditty. You can do a ditty as a full strum. You can do a ditty with just one string. You can do it with any amount of strings, really. Or you can do the strum with zero strings, and that creates that cool percussive effect of hitting the head of the banjo. So at the end of that phrase, you could just try. Now, if you haven't practiced the ghost strum before, it's very straightforward. Just play a bum ditty on your third string. It's really a good exercise, not just for the percussion, but also for training your hand to move in and out of the banjo head, having that trampoline effect, that hammer motion. You don't have to flick or you know, whack the head in any other way. You just land with the outside of your fingernails. So these nails are resting on the head. Very good, that's what I would use at the end of that phrase. They're great for open bum ditties in particular, just regular old G chord. So you've got. Let's keep moving. As I go up the neck here, I'm doing a slide into that seventh fret. It's a nice little variation idea. Moving on. Normally we'd go. But here we're gonna do something different. This is called a triplet. So a triplet is basically just a hammer on and a pull off combined into one. That's the best way to practice it, it's just. Now as you're playing through this triplet, all pieces of it should be nice and even. So hammer on, pull off. When I do the pull off, I'm not striking the string again. I'm just using my left hand, so hammer on, and then pull off. It's not like a hammer on and then lifting your finger off. It's actually three pieces. Strike, hammer on, pull off. So that phrase, that's a triplet. And then we go into another concept that's pretty new for us, combines the ghost drum, the head tap, with a strum at the beginning. So instead of going and playing that ghost strum with the C chord here, you can actually strum on that first beat. Notice what I did there, I strummed right away into the C chord, followed that with a ghost strum. So try that, strum, ghost. Kind of inverting the bum ditty almost. I call this the strum ditty, I use it a lot. It's a nice way to emphasize the chord on the first beat 
rather than the second beat like we normally do with the bum ditty it's usually one two and one two and but here it's strum ghost i call this the strum ditty and it's a really useful tool for changing up the feel emphasizing the chord change right off the bat so we have followed by those drop thumbs And then here's the ending. Okay, there's a lot in there. I twisted the melody around a little bit. Normally we'd go. But this time I added in some hammer-on, some drop thumb, more drop thumb, it goes like this. That's a hammer-on open to one on that second string. Drop thumb one to two. Pull off, two to open, and then a slide two to four. So that whole phrase. And then drop them again. Followed by a slide, and then your ghost. So let's just get that last measure because that's a really useful um, piece that you can use at the end of a lot of tunes. So it's a drop them three to four. When you get that fourth string, a nice full drop thumb sound, like a really strong pop. My banjo has this like nice deep rich sound when I play that fourth string, as opposed to if it's too kind of wimpy on that fourth string, it doesn't pop enough. That's a cool sound. So drop thumb, slide, third, and then your ghost drum at the end. So that whole last phrase, And by the way, this little phrase, you can just play that on a loop. You could actually play that again as you go into the B part. I'll show you what I mean. You could do this. So I played it over that ghost strum spot and just did that same little phrase again, and it kind of propelled me into the B part. So that's another idea. And I know I'm just throwing a lot of little variation concepts at you. A, a good strategy on your end here would be to mine through this breakdown, take one of these concepts, pause, and, and go through other tunes, or, or maybe go back through this tune again and see where else can you use these little drop thumb licks, or where you can use the strum ditty on a chord change, or triplets. So each one of these variation ideas should really be taken uh, you know, in context here as part of this arrangement, but really pull it out of the context of this tune and think about where else it can go in your playing. So where are we? Second half of the A part. There you go. So let's play the whole A part. Here it goes. Let's move on to the B part. Same idea, finding a bunch of variation concepts. Here it is. Pretty straightforward, keeping it how we were playing it before, but adding in some pull-offs. So that's a cool one. A hammer-on into that C chord. And at the end of that C chord, you could play bum, ditty with a drop thumb. So putting the drop thumb on the last beat of that measure, so. Bum, drop thumb, bum, drop thumb. Instead of one, two, one, five, we're going bum on the second string and then drop thumb at the end. So that's a really nice thing to do. Here's the next little passage in the B part. Starts the same way. This time I did a slide, two to four. So instead of going, I went into my D, regular old drop thumb there, and then to the next part. Now, notice I'm going to a C chord here. What do we do in the A part on the C chord? We did a strum. So you can do the strum ditty again.
looks great there. And here's the ending. That same little drop thumb lick. And that finishes out the tune. Let's play through the B part. Here it is. Sweet. That's the breakdown of Roscoe with some variation ideas. And honestly, we could spend hours on this kind of topic because there's so much to say. But I think, like I've said before, the most important thing is to start experimenting. Take one of these concepts at a time and add it to your playing so you develop your own style of playing claw hammer banjo.